Corals are colonies of tiny living creatures called polyps. The tentacles of cold water corals capture passing organisms such as plankton. They are then drawn into a central mouth to be digested. The reefs they build consist of their branch-like skeletons. The living coral polyps sit at the end of these calcified branches, and although growth is slow, over time deep water forests are formed up to 30 meters tall. They provide excellent hiding for juvenile fish and draw larger ones in search of prey. The predominant species in the northern waters are Lophelia, a hard white coral that grows in bush-like structures, and Gorgonia, soft pink corals. As the GeoSARS approaches the survey site, the crew's first task is to make a multi-beam map of the suspected coral area. The multi-beam system utilizes sound reflections to build a real-time map of the seabed. Now we are performing a first crude multi-beam mapping of the interesting area. The target is a, is a deep ridge where we think that um, some of the reefs are located. With the target identified, the ROV is prepared for diving. Uh, so this is the ROV Aglanta that we are using uh, on uh, this cruise. It has a depth rating of uh, 2,000 meters. Uh, and uh, the equipment we have here is we have four high-intensity discharge lights. We also have a uh, camera where we can move the camera around to see, uh, to see what we want. We also have a manipulator arm that we can use to uh, take samples from the seabed or operating. The ROV is launched through the side of the ship. It's the first dive this voyage, and with the prospect of finding the world's most northerly reefs so close, everyone crowds into the control room to get a better look. There's just a single data cable linking the ROV to the mothership, and with the craft as yet untested on this trip, it's a tense period. As the ROV begins its descent, expectation mounts. The mound is about 200 meters directly below the ship. The first sightings are not good. Now, now we have got down to, to a place with potential coral mounds. And what we see here, it is only coral rubble. And it's trawled down to small pieces. We have so far seen no live corals. It's completely smashed. It doesn't take long before the cause of the problem becomes apparent. But already after some seconds we see the first lost net in the area. As the ROV gets closer to the center of the mound, some corals are found, but not the pristine reef they had hoped for. This gear then According to the information from the from the seamen, uh, from the crew on board uh, Giosas, they guess that this gear is about 20 years old, because this kind of trawl door uh, went out to work 20 years ago. This is most probably showing a trawl track through the corals. Uh, perhaps made by the um, trawl board. Further on, the team discover the remains of what looks like the ground gear from a trawl net. It seems irrefutable evidence, but what do the fishermen say? In Tromso, we ask the fishermen's union how the trawlers operate in the coral areas. The corals can be 13 or 14 metres high, so it's not possible to trawl over. 
But if they slowly eat in from the edges, they can damage the corals little by little. But do they support a ban on fishing the coral grounds? I think it's split. Those who use trawls seem to care less about this. They get good catches if they succeed in trawling through the area. It's different for those who use stationary gear. It's not used in the reef as we lose the gear. Fishermen using small gear are the most vulnerable to snagging and losing their nets, so tend to fish away from the reef. The Norwegian Coral Act of 1999, amended in 2002, protects all coral reefs in Norwegian waters from intentional damage, with bottom trawling now banned from five specific reefs. But Norway has the longest coastline of any European country, its national waters extending 200 miles into the sea, so policing the reefs is not a simple task. One solution adopted in the last 10 years throughout the North Atlantic fishing area is the Vessel Monitoring System, or VMS. The VMS automatically reports a vessel's position and speed, but its purpose is vessel location for fish quota inspections, not to identify illegal trawling operations on reef areas. There have been no prosecutions to date based on VMS data that I'm aware of. In the United States, there's been one. I think there are problems to do with the agreement under which the fishermen um, entered into the VMS programme. I think the fishermen agreed to send the governments these data on the 